The battle with your mind has been won. More trails, more fun, more physicality. You've also fought your demons, usually a mate telling you that e-bikes are for cheats or for the unfit, which is totally untrue. So much misinformation, so much peer pressure, which has prevented loads of people from making that massive step which you've got to right now, either onto the internet or indeed to a bike shop to buy your first e-bike. This then is a guide to the next part of your journey, what e-bike to buy. Right, let's start off with money. Now, um, money is actually not a very good guide to what performance a bike gives you. And this is contrary to what many people bike tell you. But much more important factors are things such as geometry, sizing, componentry, manufacturing integrity, and durability. Now, an e-bike in general is about 20 kilos, whereas a non-e-bike is about 13 kilos. So you're actually paying a lot of the time for small gains in weight. So for example, a 500 gram difference between an alloy frame and a carbon frame doesn't actually matter so much with an e-bike. So your money should be more spent towards things such as reliability and durability. Those are the things you need to take into account when you're spending money on an e-bike. Now, sooner or later, you're gonna to have to make the decision on whether to choose a full suspension bike or a hardtail like I have in front of me here with a 120 mil fork in this instance. Now, these bikes are really good on fire roads and gravel tracks, whereas they're not quite so good on technical terrain. Although the big kind of three inch tire does have an impact and kind of take away the hits in that respect. Alternatively, you could be looking at a full suspension bike like this example I have here with 170 mil up front and on the rear. Now a bike like this can ride incredibly technical ter terrain and the opportunities in a bike like this are boundless. Now I think the key message here between full suspension and hardtail is whereas this bike can ride the technical stuff and the gravel stuff with equal proficiency, the opposite is not true. That hardtail is going to be far more limited in where you're going to be able to take it. Now what amount of travel do you choose? That's a big question in itself as well because full suspension e-bikes range from about 100mm travel front and rear up to 200mm front and rear. So what are you getting from both? Well the bike with like 100 to 120 mil travel is going to be faster to accelerate and generally better for kind of doing smoother trails. Whereas the bike with 200 mil travel is going to be fantastic at technical descending, whereas maybe less so at kind of quick accelerating on those smooth single tracks. So um, I think the bottom line actually comes down to the fact that 120 travel is quite specific and 200 mil travel is quite specific. So a lot of riders are going to choose the 150 mil travel as a good kind of sweet spot for your e-bike. It's certainly a good starting point to where to go from. Right, let's talk materials. Now, the main materials are carbon fiber and alloy, although we would actually like to see more steel involved because it's a fantastic material. For carbon fiber specifically, it depends on the type and blend of fabric used by a specific manufacturer. It also comes down to the knowledge and ability of each kind of brand and their designers. And finally, the manufacturing techniques employed by each brand, they all come and, uh, and factor into the kind of final product. So what you'll notice actually is a lot of carbon fiber e-bikes have actually got alloy back ends in them. That's because alloy is a more durable product under impact. So, you know, it's quite a vulnerable part of the bike. So what about alloy? Well, alloy is really good under impact and under crashes. It also doesn't carry the weight penalty that it does on a non-e-bike. For example, that 500 gram difference between a carbon and alloy bike doesn't actually matter so much on a 20 kilo e-bike compared to a 13 kilo non-e-bike. So ultimately what you're looking for is a good stiffness to flex balance on your bike. And like I've mentioned, this varies between brands and it is actually very subtle. The best way I suggest of you finding out is actually going and taking a carbon bike from one brand and an alloy bike from the same brand and going riding them back to back to see what just does it for you. 
What about brand? Does brand matter? Well, yes, to some people it does. Some people are quite loyal to their bike manufacturer. Uh, two other things to consider is whether you're gonna buy on the internet or direct sales or from a shop. That has a big impact on what brand you choose. Uh, but there's some fine detail, things such as what warranty does the bike or the frame have? Um, what's the kind of pricing structure on the bikes? Maybe it simply comes down to what the bike looks like. I mean, after all, I mean, a lot of people buy the bike on, on the visual rather than on the kind of practical. And finally, after sales, you know, if you're buying a bike, irrespective from um, internet, direct sales or from a shop, have a look at what the after sales service is because that's gonna have an impact, you know, once you've left the shop or the website with your bike. Now let's talk about motor and battery. Now this is gonna be at the top of many people's list. And there's indeed an element of truth in it, but the message here is don't let it take precedence over many much more important things such as geometry, sizing, and the durability of your components. Now there's lots of brands to choose from. There is Bosch, and there's Bros, there's Specialized, which is Bros hardware, but the all important Specialized software. Then you have Yamaha and then also Panasonic as well as that. Now what factors do you need to take into account when you're choosing a motor and battery system for your e-bike? Well, there's lots. Um, first up is integration. And that's to do, with, to do with the sizing. Such, you know, motors like the Shimano are quite, quite small, so that allows frame designers to make a more kind of normal kind of mountain bike geometry to their bikes. Uh, noise, well this varies between each motor brand uh, quite significantly, uh, as does the kind of battery range. So you, if you've got a 400 watt hour battery, are you gonna get less range than a 600 watt hour battery? Uh, another important fact is what happens beyond the 25 kilometer an hour limit to your pedaling assist. So some, some motors, they're actually quite easy to pedal past that limit, whereas others, there's still a bit of drag in the system. Now, for some people, software and displays is much more important. Now, this comes down to the philosophy between each brand. For example, the Specialized is quite minimalist, so that allows you to focus more on the trail than on your displays and your, on your statistics. Whereas something more like the Bosch, you have the display and you can, you can go up and down the mode. However, on the Bosch, you have EMTB mode, which is more like a kind of automatic for your kind of e-bike, if you like. And then there's others such as the Yamaha system, which means you have to really kind of work on the mode shift buttons to kind of get you through the trail. So it depends on your outlook, on your philosophy, and how you want to ride your e-bike. Wheel size, well, I'm sure you've heard the debate a million times over. So in e-bike terms, we're generally looking at 29 inch or 27.5 inch wheels. 29 with the bigger diameter definitely rolls through rocky and rooty terrain easier than the smaller wheel size, which sometimes kind of get a bit hooked up. Um, I've heard a lot of people who are like five foot to five foot six say, oh, I can't ride a 29 inch wheel because it's too big for me. But then I have actually seen a lot of riders five foot six riding 29 inch wheel bikes very happily. Okay, what about 27.5 then? Well, in general, you get a stronger wheel with a smaller wheel size. And in the past, there seems to be more availability of different tread patterns and uh, compounds on these tires. Now, I know a lot of people find the 27.5 wheel more engaging than the 29, but you need to be careful there, the difference between feeling and fact, because in fact, the 29 might actually f be faster, but it just feels slower. Um, but yeah, you can definitely interact with the terrain a bit easier on the 27.5 wheel size. And um, yeah, for a lot of people, it's a better option. Okay, as ever, it's not quite as simple as that. Um, you also have the plus size tires. Now, this specialized turbo lever beside me has a 27.5 by 2.8 inch tire. Now that 2.8 inch tire, the plus size, um, it's definitely gonna kind of protect you in kind of really rough, choppy conditions. There's gonna be less fatigue in your hands and your legs with that big tire size. Also, it's gonna give you amazing amounts of grip when you're claim climbing those crazy, crazy ascents. Um, and also under braking, because it's kind of wider, it's gonna anchor you up super quickly. So it's a really good size tire to have on an e-bike in general. And um, you'll find that there's a lot of e-bikes and now kind of employing that tire size.
So how do we conclude about wheel size then? Well, it's a very complicated subject. I mean, definitely 27.5 is a very engaging ride, but um, at the same time, don't get put off because you become adapted to the 27.5 wheel size on your previous bike. I think you can very quickly adapt to the bigger 29 inch wheel at the same time. And I think there's pros and cons of each wheel size. And in general, you're not gonna be a disadvantage on either wheel size. Choosing the right size bike is gonna be one of the most critical decisions you ever make when buying your e-bike. So why is this? Well, because if you buy a bike too small for you, it's gonna to lead to more fatigue in your body and you're gonna be overcompensating because of the deficiency in such things as wheelbase. And what you're trying to get is a good stable ride. Now, the difficulty with sizing is that it varies from brand to brand in their philosophy. Um, and it's also quite tricky in the fact that sometimes you might actually be on the kind of, on the verge of one size to another. For example, the Specialized Turbo Levo, I'm at six foot, I'm in between a large and an extra large. So I tend to go with the extra large and then fit a shorter stem on it. Now I hear a lot of people saying, well, I actually prefer a nippy bike. Well, that is inaccurate on so many levels. I mean, a lot of the time it comes down to familiarization. It only takes like maybe kind of six or seven runs to kind of get acclimatized to a bike, but that's not necessarily the best bike to choose. I think in general, people tend to kind of undersize their bikes rather than kind of get it right and get the right measurement. Now, loads of people ask me what is the correct size bike for them. And I think I can give like a generalization on this. And um, a good number is actually the kind of, the reach measurement on a bicycle. At six foot at 183, I'm about a 480 mil reach, which is from there to there. Now, I think riders around 5'10 should be looking at a 460 reach, and maybe riders over six foot should be looking at around a 500 millimeter reach. I think it's a good yardstick on which to measure your bike. Also, remember that you can change the fit of your bicycle by altering such things as the bar and stem, and also the seat in its position in the rails. So, two things there. Uh, have a look at the kind of reach measurement on your bike and compare that from brand to brand. So, for example, if you get on one bike and it feels good, you know, have a look at that number compared to another bike that you might be interested in. Uh, and yeah, and bear in mind that you can always change the fits that kind of reach on your bike by changing all those components and the kind of cockpit area. Okay, going back to componentry. Now, more riding equals more fun, but at the same time, it equals more wear on your bike. Now, get it right at the point of contact when you get your bike first time, and you'll avoid a lot of stress in that respect. So what are we talking about? Well, brakes is number one. Increased weight means kind of more, you need more kind of power there. So 200 millimeter rotors, and like, if you can, go for like four piston calipers on your, on your e-bike. Uh, second up, forks. Now, the fork is your first point of contact. That's gonna be taking all the hits, because like I said before, 20 kilo bike, and like, you know, 70 kilo ride as well, that's gonna be some big impact. So, I recommend on an e-bike, a 35 to 36 mil stanchion at the very least. Uh, wheels, now, um, there's a lot of brands have got kind of e-bike specific wheels, so maybe kind of when you're buying your bike, check on the spec that it's up to scratch, and you know, don't go for a kind of, it's definitely don't go for a kind of skinny kind of cross country style wheel on your e-bike, that's for definite. And finally, things on gearing, you know, there's definitely e-bike specific chains there out there to kind of, um, for the increased kind of mileage. So yeah, componentry is huge comes down to durability and reliability and you don't want to be kind of going back and forth to the internet or to your shop to kind of upgrade those continually so yeah get it right and finally the aesthetics it's got to look right yeah we totally get that and you know what e-bikes these days well they you know they follow the kind of traditional mountain bike silhouette and you know they're actually some good looking bikes out there they're not kind of as clumsy as they used to be um, yeah, hope you like this video. We've covered the kind of big picture questions which you need to look at and also the kind of finer detail. They're kind of equally important. Um, if you want to get into more kind of battery fundamentals, please click up here. And if you want to kind of really get into depth into the motors from all the different brands, have a look down here. I uh, hope you like this video from uh, Race Coast Cycles in Stourbridge. Uh, yeah, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.